Hey, what's up, everybody? This is C4C, and wow, well, it's just a little different right now. And hopefully, you like different. If you don't, I guess you're just gonna have to deal with it. But I like fish. If you follow the C C4C Facebook page, or if you're a part of our Telegram account, you realize there's two pets that we have that are just extreme characters. One of them is our fish. Now, it's not these fish here. These are the fish at the office tank, but we have a, what I call the main tank at the house and a bunch of African cichlids with peacock cichlids and haps, haplochromis, something else, scientificus names. But it's just beautiful, the different colors and variety that freshwater fish can have as far as the Lake Malawi fish. Uh, it's very similar to saltwater. And so the fish, if you follow our page, they're a big part of our life because it's just therapeutic. I mean, just look at them. I mean, the one's chasing the other guy, and they're actually waiting to eat. If you don't know, fish eat all the time. But the other pet that we have is, uh, I had to think about it for a minute because I just drew a blank, but it's a cat. His name's Nico, and this, he's, this cat's got some soul. If you follow Telegram Facebook page again, you'll see some photos, and He's got a Lionel Richie pose, and this cat's just fun. He's a fun cat. And so I uh, just figured we'd do a little different setup today with the camera, the fish tank, and, and hope you like it. If you do, let me know. If you don't, let me know, I guess. You're going to let me know anyways. Last time I talked a little bit about fish in one of my videos, uh, there was a comment saying, like, I, I didn't watch this to watch fish or talk about fish or whatever the case is. Who cares about fish tank? And so I don't know. Leave me feedback regardless. Any feedback, I guess, is positive feedback, even if it's negative, because positive is more feedback. It's an additional. So positive feedback, negative feedback, they could be the same. I don't know. That's a philosophical question for all the philosophy people out there. But today what I want to do is talk about uh, our top 10 interviews that we've done for C4C. Now, we've done, uh, I think it was like 50 interviews that are on the interview playlist, about 50 interviews. And some really well-known people like Dr. Jason Lau, Dr. Jody Dillo, uh, Dr. Charlie Bing, uh, people like that. And then some unknown people like a great brother of mine, uh, Caleb Downing. We talked about the Nephilim, some obscure things, Matt Swafford, talked about obscure passages, talked about Nimrod, uh, Hudson Smelly, talked about the Jewishness of Scripture, things like that. So we've got a lot of interviews because, again, C4C is not about me. It's about we. And it's about all of us sharing, you know, what God has given us just knowledge-wise, experience experience wise, whatever, to affect the cause of Christ and the kingdom here on earth. And so I love doing interviews to get other people's thoughts. And I know you guys like it too, because you guys leave me some of the best feedback is on those interviews. So today, what I want to do is talk about the top 10 interviews, at least my top 10 favorites. Now, this isn't in any particular order. Uh, it's not like number one through 10 or 10 to one. It's not a countdown. It's just 10 that if you haven't listened to, you really need to go check it out. All these interviews should be not only on the on the YouTube channel, but also on the podcast, whether you listen to podcasts on Spotify, Podbean, Apple, Google, Stitcher, whatever the case is. Find C4C Apologetics there, and you can find these interviews out there. Now, because if, if you know me personally, you know that I got the memory about the equivalent to a squirrel. And so what I ended up having to do was, yes, I actually have some cliff notes. And so I don't, typically I don't use teleprompter, Oscar, I hate teleprompters, I've used it like in one video, so stop trying to get me to use teleprompters. But for today, it's not a teleprompter, it's just my cliff notes, as far as what are my top 10 interviews. And so without further ado, I want to go into the first one again, not particular order, is by Greg Kokel. Greg Kokel, many people probably have never heard of this name, but they probably heard the ministry, Stand to Reason Ministry. And basically, Greg Kokel was the founder of that ministry. And in that one, we have an interview that's titled Engaging the Culture for Jesus Christ. Engaging the Culture for Jesus Christ. Greg Kokel is very evangelistic mind minded. And the thing I love about Greg Kokel is out of everybody I've interviewed, and what I like doing before we do the interviews is I like to talk to the person beforehand. Just get to know them a little bit, learn their personality, find out how they like being addressed during the interview, doctor, professor, mister, whatever the case is, uh, figure out their pronouns, you know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But the thing I liked about Greg Kokel is while there are some really good personable people I've interviewed on the channel, 
Greg Kokel was by far the most personable guy. He was a very kind guy, very gentle guy, very caring guy. I mean, in the interview, I'm asking him the questions, and then he turned it around and asked me what my thought was. I mean, that was pretty big, you know, and obviously he's a lot smarter than I am, but he was just very great, very well-spoken as far as, you know, how to reach people for Christ, how to witness to people, how to start a conversation that leads into spiritual matters. I mean, he's just a genius. He's got a bit out there called the Columbo Tactic that goes ahead and, and you ask people a question uh, and then follow up with a second question and a third question to understand what they're understanding or understand what they're believing. And then from there, you can go ahead and really discuss with the individual. And so Greg Kokel, Engaging the Culture for Jesus, that was one of my favorite interviews because, again, he's just such a nice, kind guy, and he's got a lot of practical information. The second one is from Dr. Paul Copan. Dr. Paul Copan, he's actually a professor at Palm Beach Atlantic, and it's a college out there in Florida, I believe it is. And basically, what we actually did an interview was, is the question, is God in an immoral monster is God in a moral monster the atheist objections and critiques of the Bible so check that video out the interview in that there's no holds barred I asked this guy a lot of hard questions I asked this guy as far as in the book of Judges uh, Jephthah's uh, foolish vow as far as uh, did he sacrifice his daughter because she came out of the house we asked the question as far as using lying spirits we asked the question of in one of the Psalms, there's a reference to uh, bashing babies against rocks. What is the deal with that? And so if you ever want to really look at some of these very difficult questions that skeptics, cynics, critics of the Bible want to bring up, uh, check out that interview because he has some fascinating answers and explanations on what Scripture is actually saying. Like, did God call and command a genocide with the Amalekites or any of the other ites out there when it says kill every man, woman, and child? Or was that just Near Eastern cultural uh, terminology like, hey, the predators just destroyed the Blackhawks? Well, did they really destroy them or was it a figurative use? And so he talks a little bit about that as well. So is God an immoral monster? Uh, if you've ever had questions and heard any arguments from atheists, check out Dr. Paul Copan's interview with that. Another one is somebody that whenever we do this interview with this individual, I always preface it by saying I really like him because he's like my personality, my type. And I just really resonate with him. This is Dr. Fred Shea. He's the academic professor, academic dean at Grace School of Theology. And we've interviewed him on a couple of different things. But the one that I really like the most is the interview that's called the false dichotomy, Calvinism or Arminianism. Are those the only choices? If someone says that they're not a Calvinist, automatically people assume that you're Arminian and vice versa. But is that the only two choices? And in there, he gives a great argument as far as what's known as free grace theology. He gives uh, historical review and analysis as far as free grace theology within colonial America when the pilgrims came over. And it was just fascinating learning that. I love Dr. Shea because he is very passionate about scripture. He's a very black and white kind of guy. Uh, he he's I call him an excavator, an excavator, an archaeologist, because he really digs into scripture. And uh, I just love the guy. So if you're wondering as far as difference between Calvinism, Arminianism, are those the only two choices? What's the foundations, origins of free grace theology, at least here in America and things like that? Check out that interview with him. Another one is going to be by an individual by the name of Hudson Smelly. Hudson Smelly. Basically, uh, he's the founder of Mission 119 Ministries. And what I love about Hudson is he's very Jewish mindset, very J Jewish oriented. And from what I remember, he actually went through a Jewish school as well, knows a lot about the Jewish customs, practices, liturgy, things of that nature. And our interview was eschatology from a Jewish perspective. And we got to realize the fact that the Bible was written mostly by Hebrews. It's a Hebrew book written by Hebrews to Hebrews, if you will. And so we got to understand the culture of the Hebraic people, the Jewish people. Understand their culture, their lingo, what was happening back then, figures of speech, idioms, things of that nature. And by understanding that, we can. it really just sheds light onto the entire Bible and understanding things so much more clearly. 
And specifically with Hudson's interview, we talked about eschatology and what role does the Jewish remnant have within the end times. And it's just fascinating. So if you're wondering when is Jesus going to return, check out the interview with Hudson Smelly as far as eschatology from a Jewish perspective. The next one, based off my cliff notes, is from Dr. Jason Lau. Now, again, Dr. Lau, I've interviewed him a couple times, but the one I want to talk about specifically, the interview is titled, Where Do Craters Fit Within the Biblical Creationism Model? Now, this was a question that I had when I first started studying young earth creationism uh, from a lady here in our church that in Watumpka, Alabama, from what I remember, uh, Watumpka was formed based off of a crater, if you will. And so she was wondering from a, if the earth is only 6,000 plus years old, then where do craters fit? Have craters been around for millions and millions of years, or did they happen thousands of years ago? And so what I do with Dr. Lyle is I just interview him really about arguments and what evidence do we have that craters are young? Uh, we talked about the Ice Age, and we talked about the flood, its relevance and all this. So it's just it's fascinating. And so I liked Dr. Lyle because he's a very smart guy. He goes to show that if you're watching this video, you're not dumb, okay? Because a lot of atheists and skeptics will say, only dumb people believe in religion. Oh, you got to lose, leave your brain at the door when you go to church. Dr. Lyle really clearly reveals, really clearly reveals, I had a Patrick moment, uh, but he reveals the fact that there are a lot of people that have a lot of knowledge and they believe in the God of the scriptures. And so I, I like that aspect of it. He loves astronomy, so I like astronomy, and uh, so just the beauty of the universe, things like that. So he is a very knowledgeable guy on the topic. We interviewed him on this, and we also interviewed him about the flat earth. You know, is the earth flat? You'd be surprised how many people believe the earth is flat. I'm not a flat earther. I'm a spherical earther. I'm not a round earther. I'm a spherical earther. I think there's a difference because even with a flat earth, they still argue that it's round, circular, whatever the case is. But... Check out Jason Lyle. He's a founder of the Biblical Science Institute. From there, I got a name that many people probably do not know of, and it's the name of Dr. Roger Fankhauser. Dr. Roger Fankhauser. And from what I remember, he was the senior pastor of Burleson Bible Church out in Burleson, Texas. And in the interview, it's titled, What is Repentance According to the Bible? Now, this interview is fascinating because... Repentance is one of those terms that has changed its meaning over the course of time, the course of lexicons, and then it's really been hijacked, if you will, by Calvinists and Lordship crowd, and people within free grace just, it, it, it's like we're afraid of the word repentance or the term repentance, and what does it mean? And so what Dr. Finkhauser reveals is the fact, what does repentance truly mean from a biblical perspective? And then not only that, what are the various ways that it can be understood, and even within the free grace theology aspect. Now, what Roger, he, Roger's such a clown. He's such a who. It was so fun interviewing him because he's got such a sense of humor. He's such a fun guy. And so uh, check that out, uh, Dr. Roger Fankhauser, on that interview, What is Repentance According to the Bible? The next one is, is from someone who is my mentor. I am his Timothy, he is my Paul, and basically he's the one that really grew me spiritually, and I got saved under his pastorate uh, here in Alabama, but it's by Ken Stadola, Ken Stadola, and so Pastor Ken Stadola, it's the interview called, What is the Unpardonable Sin? This is a question that still is in debate today, and I don't know why it is, because I just, again, it understanding it from a Jewish perspective, we can understand clearly what the unpardonable sin is. It's not murder. It's not suicide. You could make the argument that it's just a continual state of unbelief, but in its context, in Matthew chapter 12 and Mark chapter 3, I believe it is possibly, the unpardonable sin is attributing the works of Messiah, not by the Spirit, but by demon possession. And it was an unpardonable sin pronounced for that specific Jewish generation there at that time. It cannot be committed to today by today. Well, yeah, today can't commit it. It can't be committed by anybody living today. And so in that interview, we talked to Pastor Sadola, and he gives the Jewish understanding as far as the time of Christ, why Christ came to offer the kingdom, what the unpardonable sin is. And I love it, and the fact that he takes very deep and difficult topics and breaks it down in ways that's so easy to understand. And not only that, but is relevant and practical to our life today. And 
And what role does the unpardonable sin, if we can't commit it today, what role does it play in our lives today? Well, there's still a relevance with it today. And so uh, it's just fascinating. So Ken Stadola, pastor of Open Door Baptist Church here in Prattville, Alabama, one of the, uh, the church that I'm the assistant pastor of underneath him. And so if you're wondering what is the unpardonable sin, what Jewish insight is there with any of this, check out that interview, What is the Unpardonable Sin? The next one is an individual that I met at a conference last October in Keller, Texas, and and uh, it just I listened to his workshop. He taught a workshop out there at the conference, and it was just fascinating. I saw his heart. By it's by a man by the name of Thani Abu Hamad. Thani Abu Hamad. Basically, he is the founder of Golden Apples Industry, and what this interview is titled is "Spiritual Deconstruction." Is it the end of faith? And so basically, Thani, what he does is he talks about deconstructing and whether deconstruction from faith is a healthy thing or an unhealthy thing. He talks about his own personal experience and in his trials, his struggles. And in that interview, you really see his heart. You really see his burden, his passion to help people. And there's just raw emotion there in that interview. And so I really encourage you, if you're questioning the faith, if you're struggling, if you're considering deconstructing, or, or you're just curious, what is deconstruction? I hear it all the time now. Then check out that interview by Thani Abu Hamad called Spiritual Deconstruction, Is It the End of Faith? He is a very fascinating individual, and, and I just love Thani, and he's just a great guy, and so he's got a heart for helping people, so check that out. I got two more left, and we'll be done with this interview, and you can click me off and go watch whatever it is you want to watch. But uh, the next one is going to be my interview with the AI. Yes, many of you have already seen the interview that I had with the AI, and that interview was, number one, it was difficult because basically with ChatGPT, it was all a text program, and so I have this transcript that, you know, I'm asking a question, it's replying, then I'm replying, and it's replying. And so I wanted to take the transcript and convert it into a video with an avatar. And so it was just, it was such a long process trying to figure out how to get an avatar, and, and I ended up getting paid, charged like $400 to do this avatar, uh, unbeknownst to me, but I think I figured it out as far as getting that money refunded, but... It was fascinating video, just all the behind the scenes on making it work to make it very engaging. Uh, this interview is called Interview with an AI. <laughs> How original. Interview with an AI about apologetics and Christianity. And what this interview does, it really reveals that AI technology is very startling. Very startling. The AI speaks with a lot of confidence as if what he's saying is pure, unadulterated truth. But yet, as the interview showed, is what it was replying as was not truth. And we could actually get the AI to apologize and to correct his misunderstanding to say what we want it to say. And so it was just fascinating about the startling rea reality of AI, and especially in this moment with transhumanism, this still push with the WEF and all these other organizations uh, to sort of combine robotics with biology. is. It's startling. Check out that video. The last video, I just had to put this on the list. I'm sorry, Rebecca. Was the secret interview with my wife. It's called the, a secret interview with my wife. And my wife did not know this was happening. I was trying to go ahead and get some things figured out, dialed in, stuff like that when we were stationed up in South Dakota. And so I had uh, got her on the camera with me and we're talking and, and just pretending like we're being interviewed or she's being interviewed. And she didn't know the camera was rolling. And it, it was just so funny. My wife is such a great sport. She's a beautiful woman inside and out and married for over 21 years now today. And so uh, thanks be to God for her sticking around with me because I was not a good guy in the beginning. But uh, it was just a fun interview, you know. So if you want to go ahead and uh, at least, you know, see who I'm married to and just see, you know, how fun she is and this banter back and forth and the comedic uh, relief element, check that out a secret interview with my wife so like i said these were the 10 interviews that i think were at least for me the most fun uh the most uh uh enlightening and, and teaching and influential as far as my ministry is concerned here uh, you may have some other ones that you liked better if you do let me know in the comments below but otherwise if you haven't checked out any of these 
go check them out, please. If you're struggling with whether hard questions, difficult topics of the Bible, check out Paul Copan. If you want to know how to engage the culture for Jesus Christ and have spiritual conversations and dialogues with people, check out Greg Kokel and Engaging the Culture for Jesus. If you have questions about deconstruction and what does that mean, Thani Abu Hamad. If you're wondering what the unpardonable sin is, Pastor Ken Stadola. If you're wondering, okay, what role does Jewishness play within Scripture and do I really under need to understand Israel uh, to understand Scripture in its fullest? Check out Hudson Smelly. What is repentance? Check out Dr. Roger Fankhauser. What is Calvinism, Arminianism, and are there the only choices? Check out Dr. Fred Shea. So check out a lot of these people. Uh, I think, actually, wow, I I just, I, I memorized all that. Like I said, I got the memory of a squirrel. Those fish are so cool, aren't they? The big guy with the blue and green glitter, his name is not Jack. He's a Jack Dempsey, but my daughter says I can't call him Jack because she has a Jack Dempsey or did. And so we call him not Jack Jack. So squirrel dug moment. Anyways, but... That's the 10 top 10 list interviews. And I'm going to toss that paper over there. And so I appreciate you sticking around. Don't forget, like, comment, share, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. And until next time, God bless.